Hi everybody and welcome to the TensorFlow Developer Summit. I'm Lawrence Moroni and I'm here at the TensorFlow Cafe and it's my honor to chat with Derek Murray. Hello. And Derek just did a talk on TF Data and lots of great stuff in TF Data and lots of great new stuff in TF Data. Yeah. So could, you, could you tell us about it? A lot of work's gone into performance and we made some announcements about the, uh, the new performance numbers we're achieving with TF Data. So this 13,000 images per second number that we're really proud of. But we also know that we can totally beat and we're still working to like <laughs> make, uh, make even further advances. I'm, I'm going to be chatting with you in this seat next year, and you're going to be saying it's 130. 130. Oh my goodness! <laughs> we'll, we'll need a we'll need a bigger no nuclear pressure. power plant next to, to <laughs> keep up with that. Um, and uh, a lot of advances on ease of use as well. So we're adding sort of convenience functions to make it easier for people to get started with the library and uh, to deal with different kinds of data formats that are maybe not what we're as used to using internally at Google, but are more sort of inspired by what the community wants. Okay, okay, sounds good. So um, one of the things that you spoke about a lot, and I really like that catch, it was like fast, flexible, and easy to use. You know, it's like, is, is that your catchphrase? Or That's it, yeah, yeah, you need three things, rhetorical triples <laughs> and, uh, and talks. That's how I do them. So what impact do you think that's going to have like, on people building models? Well, I think, I think bef before we had a library with these characteristics, we kind of had two, we had a, a dichotomy between two different options. You could either go this feeding route, which was very flexible. You could write any code you liked in Python, and it would work, and it get into TensorFlow. Right. Super slow. I mean, it was kind of held up by the, uh, the global interpreter lock in your Python program. And you just couldn't keep up with a, a, a modern accelerator. Right. Maybe like three years ago you could do that, but now <laughs> they're so much faster. That you right. can. And then on the other side, we had these very flexible uh, queue-based input pipelines okay. um, that were a lot faster, a lot more efficient, but not very easy to use. They had like very sharp edges. Okay. You could forget to put a line of code in your program and it would, it would hang there. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so what we want to do is take the, take the good parts of both of those and put them together so that there's, just one, there's really just one choice. And it's easy to use for people just getting started, but they can also very rapidly get the kind of performance that you would need to be able to saturate a, a Volta GPU or a cloud TPU. In my case, like I'm a relatively new developer with this kind of stuff and a, and a naive developer to some extent. So it's like, in my, I was thinking like uh, how a lot of this works is I get my data and I throw it at you know, a training model and, I, and it trains and it goes. And I never really thought about how I refine my data to be able to, to get it in to make it more efficient. So I, I'm sure if I was doing it, it'd be 100 images a second, not 1,000. Well, but how do I get from that to the 13,000? Well, there are a lot of sort of tips and tricks that we've collected as we've done this. Actually, the original play with TF data was to make something that was easy to use and, and performance was a, a secondary consideration. But um, as we discovered that people were becoming more and more demanding and as the cloud TPU project was coming online, we are like, well, okay, we've got to <laughs> like, try hard to, to do well here. Let's push it. We really had to push it. And we, and we have very, these benchmarks that we're following and, and that other people are using in their frameworks to compare. So um, there's a lot of tips and tricks. And the best way to learn how to do it yourself is to look at the performance guide that we've just put up on tensorflow.org, the TF Data Performance Guide. And it has a lot of, uh, sorry, both the theory of how you optimize pipelines. Uh, I mean, it's kind of elementary queuing theory in some sense. It's, don't worry, there's not too much math. Um, <laughs> and, and also like the literal ingredients that you use in your program to achieve these pipeline benefits. Right. right. So uh, hopefully it's accessible. What we're also planning to do, and uh, Brennan Seta is going to be talking about this later today, is kind of auto-tuning your pipeline a bit more. So right now it's, it's a very manual process. Yes. And we're just trying to give you all the parts you need so that uh, someone skilled in the art can put something together that's fast. But we want that speed to be accessible to everyone as well, uh, because it's only by making things fast enough that we can uh, sort of achieve transformative new uses of machine learning. So we're going to work on auto-tuning and sort of automatic compilation to, uh, to, to uh, apply these changes automatically for you. Nice, nice. And, and all this is going to be in the TF data namespace? In the TF data namespace? Uh, yes, okay. pro probably. <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, no, we like that name. Uh, uh, proud of it. it's, a, it's a good name. Yeah. And, and, and along then, you mentioned on the tensorflow.org, there's that guide for um, optimizing and Absolutely, speeding up yeah. your input. And of course, people should watch your talk. Well, they should watch my talk. They should also watch Brennan's talk uh, later this afternoon. He is really going to go into depth on sort of how you take a slow program starting out and go through the steps of using our optimizations but also our monitoring tools to like work out from a sort of hypothesis testing scientific point of view how to uh, make your pipeline more efficient. Sounds good. So if I want to get started with this, where should I go? Well, I think the best place to get started right now is actually to head over to Kaggle because um, just in the last uh, 
couple months, I think, uh, Kaggle's put out this API for downloading data sets oh, okay. uh, with like a single command. You type Kaggle data sets download and the name of the, the data set that you've seen on their website. And it's just one command, it puts all the files in your local directory. And then in TensorFlow, you can use this new make CSV data set uh, API that our Anugler Rachel Lin, who just joined the team, wow. did in her first like first couple of weeks. It's awesome. It really simplifies the task of working with this kind of data. And you just have to like write one line of code and you're off to the races with it. <laughs> and it was done by Anugler. Yeah, yeah, she just started. She's great. Did she think that was like some kind of hazing or like? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> if you're watching Rachel, Let's give you a really we're, we're very project project with what you're doing. <laughs> it's amazing though that some uh, that just somebody newly joined Google could do that. But that's it's th great. That's the tense. Flow community is like that. There's so many fantastic. brilliant people out there doing amazing things. And we love that we've had a lot of contr community contributions on this part of the library uh, for different formats and sort of different uh, data analysis approaches that people want to take. And we really appreciate it and you know, invite people to send as many as possible. Okay, so great big thanks to the community yeah. and a great big thanks to you. So thank you. And thanks everybody for watching. If you've got any questions for me or if you've got any questions for Derek, please leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks. Thank you.